welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Organized business formation Bursa admitted this week that efforts over the past 23 years to de-racialize the South African economy have fallen short. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss Bursa's plan for addressing this failing. Hi Terence. Hi Sino. Bursa released what it calls a business approach to black economic transformation for inclusive growth. How and why was this document released? Well, the background everyone, I thought, imagined was because of the cabinet reshuffle and also this ramping up of the rhetoric around radical economic transformation that's coming out of the governing African National Congress. But an assurance was given that this uh, process predated that and that in about December last year, I think with the rising uh, rhetoric around radical economic transformation and an acceptance that uh, on a number of levels, um, especially the ownership front, uh, the transformation isn't uh, moving ahead as planned or as envisaged um, when, the, when the first black economic empowerment um, uh, processes were launched. BUSA did some soul searching uh, across its membership base <coughs> and this document this week is the outcome of that soul searching exercise which they say is fairly unprecedented that all its members and BUSA has got a number of members and we know there is a fight at the moment between BUSA and the Black Business Council, so it's not the all of business. But a, a lot of its members, which are sector-based uh, organizations and a range of other uh, uh, direct members and indirect members, uh, they do make up a good portion of the South African business landscape. And all of them have come to an agreement that the pace um, and also the depth of uh, transformation, especially in terms of deracializing the economy in the management sphere, but also in ownership, is just not what was envisaged, and that new efforts are required to try and get this uh, transformation moving ahead more speedily. And this document is the, the first step from their perspective to try and outline their vision. So the content there is that the focus on ownership uh, should po possibly be de-emphasized de because one um, it hasn't really worked in terms of transformation. It's only empowered a small elite, and uh, so it hasn't been broad-based, and that's been a, a problem. But there's also practical problems around continually uh, trying to sell equity stakes to black partners. It locks people in that may have better um, returns for their money elsewhere, and uh, it also doesn't give them the control aspect or these black shareholders the control that is that was envisaged uh, initially, so that, that, that there's not a, the same sort of power um, that these shareholders have in, ex in exercising transformation that was uh, was envisaged, and so the emphasis th therefore is looking at uh, deepening um, the education and training system, having a great emphasis on s supplier development, embedding uh, especially black entrepreneurs and black industrialists into supply chains. And then I think quite a key one is to try and have an, a renewed culture around the importance of transformation. It's more of a, a soft issue, but it's, it is the issue that seems to be an impediment at a number of organizations to try and get the culture of the importance of transforming these businesses. Uh, but, uh, which I think the president of BUSA, Jabba Mabuza, said, it's not we're really not on a sustainable direct trajectory. It's, uh, would be uh, sort of politically naive if we continued on this trajectory and that uh, something more uh, radical or drastic um, needs to be done. What are the next steps for BUSA? The next steps are really to consult more broadly. So they did emphasize that um, this document is quite short on solutions. So it does a diagnostic and it brings the sort of main areas where they feel there should be a focus or attention given around especially getting um, more black uh, executives layer in so that uh, different transfer, different sort of uh, feel comes through into boardrooms and executive management to try and drive the culture of transformation. But it is quite short on, on exact remedies. And there's a reason for that, and that's the reason they felt there should be broader consultation with government, with policy makers, with labor, and with other social partners so that it isn't business coming with a, a, a one-size-fits-all type solution, but it's more of a, a compact between the different partners to try and put uh, b transformation on a, on a firmer footing 
but at the same time emphasizing the need to raise the competitiveness of South African business. The publication emerges just ahead of the ANC's policy conference. What are the possible implications for business from this conference? I think the implications are quite significant and I think that business will be watching especially the Economic Transformation Commission within this uh, uh, policy conference which starts on Friday and continues to the 5th of July and that commission is going to be discussing um, uh, the a ANC's approach to economic transformation and there's a number of hot button issues that are going to be looked at. I think one we definitely know f is in terms of land reform. Is it about accelerating existing policy or actually moving more assertively to even possibly change the constitution around pushing for a no compensation type land reform? Or is the mining charter a sort of shot across the bow in the sense that this is going to be the blueprint for the type of policies that we're going to see in terms of driving transformation? Or is it an aberration and that the ANC is going to go back to a more consultative, less unilateral approach? Business made it clear that this unilateral approach is going to have dire consequences. And we're really seeing some of those playing out in the mining industry. But there are a number of other hot buttons, the, the, the mandate of the Reserve Bank, uh, for instance, which has been raised by the public protector, and the role of banks in society. I think this is where the focus of a lot of the, the sort of rhetoric around white monopoly capital is really sort of centered on. So there will be those hot button, and I'm sure a few others, that people will be wanting to see whether ANC is going to be bringing policy certainty or whether they're going to be bringing some sort of overhaul uh, to policy, which is obviously going to uh, create some sort of tensions. We have seen in the run-up to this policy conference that some members of the, our leadership in the ANC are starting to meet with uh, the business community more assertively. We saw the automotive engagement. There's going to be one with the, the financial community, financial services community as well. And I think this is an attempt, one, to, s to test the waters. Is business behind transformation? What Busa and both the automotive industry said quite firmly, yes, we realize that we're falling short and we want to do more uh, in this area. And I think that's going to be the message from business. But I think business would also have said that, you know, if there's this total overhaul and a unilateral approach, at the moment we are prepared to be a cooperative partner, despite the fact that you've really eroded trust over the last two years, one through the firing of uh, Nklant Lenene, um, at the end of uh, 2015, and then two after, you know, building up a, a sort of serious pushback against the, the downgrades uh, with the fina former finance minister Pravin Gordon, that trust was then broken on the 31st of March this year when uh, um, President Zuma announced the shock uh, out of the Long Knives cab cabinet reshuffle. So business is very clear that. They need to see if ANC continues to be a willing partner in this cooperative response or whether the ANC is planning to go it alone. But I think business realises that unless they take some initiative, they are going to be transformed either for in the form of aggressive policy or legislative changes or through uh, greater social pressure that's going to come through. So we're in a, in a quite a, a tricky position. Business is in quite a, a difficult position place at the moment, as is the South African economy, and I think a lot hinges on the next few weeks. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis.